Hello there! Welcome to my channel and my blog. We are Crafted in His Image and I am so excited to get to do a little crafting therapy this week um, using my hand. Um, actually when this video goes live I should be getting the stitches removed so I'll be back to crafting a bit more. Um, but anyway I wanted to share with you today a 3D Thursday this is 3D, it actually sits on your desk, a little calendar. I make these every year for my customers and I'm a bit late getting it out this year, but I wanna show you how I made this little project, a little, a little calendar for them to have on their desk. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. As you can see, I've used the Lifetime of Love stamp and die set for this, along with the coordinating paper pack. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you first off how I made the calendar part. Now this is a peel off calendar and you can buy these, you can purchase them already made, ready to go for your projects. However, I didn't need very many and I didn't want to buy like a pack of 50 of them or whatever because I only needed a couple dozen. So I prefer to make them myself and there's a couple ways to do it. Um, you can purchase on, or not even purchase online, this is free. This is a calendar that I just downloaded from the internet somewhere and printed it up and you can cut along the lines and basically make your calendar out of this and it wouldn't cost you anything at all. Um, I, however, have a Silhouette uh, electronic die cut machine and so I opted to get one of the calendars that they had on there and go ahead and let my machine cut it out for me. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off of my mat. Oh, actually, I'm gonna need a corner of that later, so I'll save that over there. Um, and then I'm going to take these off of here in order, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and of course December. So let me move those out of our way and whoop, almost lost January. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just basically going to tap these together. Just kind of making sure the edges are really all lined up as neatly as possible. Um, and then I'm going to take this piece here. Let me grab a pair of scissors really quick. And I'm just going to cut one of these because I like to use just this scrap. And actually, I'm going to cut off this corner because I'm going to use it in a minute too. Um, but I like to take and put a scrap piece across the front. Actually, that wasn't quite big enough, so we'll use this one instead. And let me cut that. And the reason I like to do that is if I do accidentally get some glue, if I'm not as neat and tidy as I'd like to be, I don't want to have any glue on that front panel when I'm done. And I can just peel this piece off. So let me go ahead and grab, I've got some binder clips here. And that is something I still can't do really well with my dominant hand. So we're going to have to use the left hand for this. There we go. Um, there, trying to make sure it's all flat. Get another one and do this side as well. Okay, so this is all nice and smooth across the top here. So what I'm gonna do now on my little extra scrap piece, I'm gonna put a dab of glue and um, do not, you don't want to use our multi-purpose glue for this. This glue, I've mentioned it many times, this glue remains tacky even once it's dry and you don't want to have tacky glue on the top of your um, calendar all year long. So you want a glue that's going to dry, not tacky. And so I'm going to use Eileen's tacky glue and I'm just going to squeeze some. Yes, I'm getting okay at squeezing even with that hand. There we go. Oh! I just flipped it upside down. Thankfully, this is a glass mat and it is easy to clean. There we go. <laughs> and now what I'm going to do now, you can use a paintbrush for this if you prefer. Um, I like to use my fingers. They're just easier to clean and I feel like I have a little more control of getting it nice and smooth. I may need a little more glue than that. We'll see. And then I just like to rub it right along the top. Squeeze those papers together and get it a little bit thick. You don't want to like rub all of the glue off of there once you're done. You want a little bit of thickness there, but not a ton. And then I'm going to take another clamp, another binder clip here, 
and I'm just gonna put that right in the middle and make sure those center ones are all squeezed together. And then I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry. And then throw that away, clean off my fingers, and on to um, our next part. Now I have one already finished, it's already dry. I did this a while ago. Take off my binder clips. And that's another reason I like to use this extra piece of paper across the front. Sometimes the binder clips will actually leave marks on your paper if they're too tight. And so then it just leaves it on that front piece of the bottom and doesn't see it. You don't see it as much. And then I could just take this piece here, peel it off, and now I have a finished calendar ready to go. So now let's put together our project. Super, super easy project today for the rest of it. Um, half sheet, so four and a quarter by 11. And it has been scored at eight and a half, nine and a half, ten and a half. Easy peasy. Oh, and four and a quarter over here as well. So, and again, I will have all of these measurements over on the blog. And you could use our um, Stamp and Seal Plus if you want, um, only because this project, if you, you want it to last for the entire year, um, and if it takes any movement and stuff, that would probably be the better adhesive. However, I know mine is simply gonna sit on my desk. It's really not gonna take a lot of movement, so I'm not too concerned about um, using a super duper heavy glue for this. Um, I'm not real great at using that hand yet. Let's see if I can keep it straight on this hand. There we go. <laughs> I'll try doing this one, let's see. Oh, I did it and it's not too painful. Yes, nice. I'm gonna go ahead and put some adhesive on the back of this piece as well. Yeah, gripping things is the part that I'm still in a little bit of pain, but not not too bad. Definitely much, much better than it was. So, I know, you probably can't see the score lines there. Let me go ahead and fold this. So you can see where that score line is a little bit. And I'm just gonna center even borders around those three sides, my little square here. I believe this one is three and a half by three and a half. Yep, three and a half by three and a half. And then this one I know is a three by three and I did that on purpose so that I could get 16 of these out of one sheet of 12 by 12. And I was able to do that easily. Make sure that's centered. There we go. And then you do want to make sure you burnish it really well. That is one of the things to make sure our adhesive really sticks is to burnish it down really well. There we go. And then I want a little bit of tear and tape. And again, you probably can't see this. Let me go ahead and fold that there. I'll go ahead and fold these. I'm going to use my bone folder to burnish them really well, but you can see this is like a M shape that we're doing. But I'm gonna put my tear and tape, and you can put your tear and tape either at this end or on this end, either way. If you put it on here, you wanna make sure you get it right at the very edge of your paper. If you put it on this one, you wanna make sure you get it right at the edge of that score line. So I'm gonna put it on the score line. Where's my head? There it is. Just want to go right along that score line with it and then I am going to use this on the back of my calendar as well just at the top all right so there's that and I'm not going to adhere this yet but I am going to go ahead and adhere this one find my pokey tool I have no fingernails there we go Where's my cup? There's my cup. We'll make lots of noise there. And then this you want to center as well. And what I'm gonna actually do is use the bottom to center before I drop the top down that way. I have time to move it around if it's not. There we go. I hear that really well. Okay, then I am gonna go ahead and use my bone folder and really burnish these. This is the part that is still difficult to do. Oh, and I think I stretched my hand a little too far that time. There we go. So we get that one. Um, go ahead and 
burnish this one. I probably should have done it before I put the calendar on there so it was a little more flat, but. And then let's burnish this one. And last one here. Get that burnished well. Okay, so those are all burnished and ready. And now for our doodads, our pretties. Now I'm gonna show you how I colored this. I have one already finished here, but I'm gonna show you how I colored. I'm just gonna color a little bit of it just so you can see. Um, this color on this background is Pretty Peacock and I really kind of wanted to pull a little bit of that into my leaves. So I am using, believe it or not, Pretty Peacock, the light color, and light old olive for my leaves. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and put a little bit of this Pretty Peacock. And this is a very intense color, so you don't need a lot. I'm barely touching that paper. And I'm just going to go along where there would be shadows. And then I'm going to use the old olive and I'm going to come in and blend and I'm going to first I'm going to kind of do the whole leaf itself and then where the old olive meets the peacock I'm going to just put a little more color there and you see how that blends that out so super easy to do um, but you do want to work kind of quickly so that you, you definitely want to blend this one out but it does Kind of pull that blue into your leaf, into the color a little bit. Um, and then the flowers were simply petal pink, dark and light, because that's what this color is. And I'm going to come in with the dark, and I'm going to go where there would be shadows. And I really need my cheaters on so I can see what I'm doing here. There we go, a little bit of dark at the base of those petals. And then come in with my light petal pink and color in the whole flower. And then what I found was it kind of blended the dark in a little more than I wanted. So after I blended the whole thing in like that, I came back in with my dark. And then in some of the areas, I added just a little bit more and it really reinforced that shadow. Just made it a little bit darker in those areas so it kind of brought it out a little more. There we go, see? So there is that one. I would bring it up closer to the screen but then it won't be in focus anyway. But So those are the ones that I use for coloring. And now we're simply going to adhere. Now I've already put some dimensionals and I put the dimensionals here, here, and here because I'm going to actually cover up the corner of this, but you need to be able to pull that out in order to peel it off, and you don't want it stuck to the to the flowers. And then I've got two of the leaves cut out in some pretty gold. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay this here just to see where it's at, and then to make it a little bit easier for myself, rather than applying glue on here, I'm simply going to put some glue behind that rose, a little blob, and then some glue behind this rose over here. And now all I have to do is set this right into the blue. No big deal if there's excess glue because it's not going to show. And this leaf here needed to tuck behind otherwise it would stick out which is not a big deal if it's sitting on your desk but I kind of wanted it a little more secure so it wouldn't end up falling apart later and then peel these off and just the only thing you want to make sure on this one is that nothing sticks out below this seam right here or this crease right here because if it's below that then it's going to be um, on the, that's on the bottom and you don't want it. If it sticks out this side, not a big deal. And there we go. We have finished. Well, almost finished. Now I need to take off this. Maybe. There we go. And actually, it's easier if I just grab it, put the bottom right along the crease, right along the fold line. Hold it, give it a really good burnish. 
And there we have a finished. Two of them. Yay. So there you have a 3D Thursday. And I hope you enjoyed my little crafting therapy that I got to do. And um, I hope you enjoy it. You can also use the same technique here to make yourself little mini notepads as well. Um, just by clamping a bunch of paper together and putting that glue across the top and letting it dry. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this project. And until next time, God's love and blessings to you. Bye.